All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you had a wonderful day. It's only the second video of the year, but I thought I would drop a little tutorial and show you how we turned just under 600 bucks into about $7,000 realized. The first play was ARC, $383. We sold out for $7,000. It was a $4,000 net profit since we utilized another strategy that I'll go over. Then the next play, which was only in one day, we had FedEx $100 into about like thirteen dollars or $1,400. And then we also had the Nike, which was $169 into $1,000. So I want to share this strategy with you and like I showed you there there's other strategies that I've used on plays you'll even see with this Nike I did utilize shares to protect the gains on some of these plays but my main goal in all of this is to give you a rough guideline that you could follow to help you make some better option trades this year I've been telling you for the last year here options has gotten extremely difficult with uh, the inflow of new traders and a lot of new changes in the market but you could still use some of these strategies to hope Hopefully, manage your risk and lose less money. Very big emphasis on that of lose less money because a lot of options, a majority of them are are losing trades so I want you to understand this and I do hope it guides you and like I'm saying with all of the other strategies that we have used before I don't think I did it on the FedEx I did it on the arc play we also utilize something called the ghetto spread so if you haven't seen this OG video did this a couple of years ago we turned five hundred dollars into fifty thousand dollars and we used the strategy to make sure we walked away a winner and still had upside gain so I would go check that out but what we are going to go over today it is called the ghetto standard deviation now I have a little bit of a breakdown we're going to go through a step-by-step -step process then I'm going to go back and show you some new examples that I just did today for earnings next week and then we are going to go back to the document run through it one more time to make sure that you understand it now here's the only caveat I have for you it is still the watch list. I have a good watch list coming out for you tomorrow on this channel since we have big data on Friday. But as far as what happened today, we have a lot to talk about, but also a little bit. Why we have to talk about it? Because it was another big down day. And now the S&P 500 is down for the first two trading days of the year. And the last time that happened was in 2015. So what went down today? It was the Fed minutes. We did get a little bit of data, but we brushed it off quickly. I guess you could say the same thing about the minutes, but the minutes didn't really change. Eventually, people started saying it was a little bit more hawkish, but all it did was bring into doubt, into doubt when the Fed would cut, not the fact that they are cutting. That's why we are still elevated. The irony of all of it, everybody was getting excited and pumping it up at 4,700, and now two days to start the year, the calendar changes, nothing really happens, but everybody is sweating even though we are right at that level that just about a couple of weeks ago people were freaking out so what do I think happened I think the minutes were anything new I think it was a punt that is leading us into that data on Friday so like I'm saying I'm gonna give you a nice recap tomorrow and really where did everybody start picking up that today was hawkish well it was after your boy, Mr. Nick Timmerhouse, around 11.59. I think it was 11.54, uh, but the tweet says 11.59. Maybe they, maybe they edited it. I don't know. But either way, right around power hour, we were up right before. People were thinking it was good. Again, same information. Nothing happened here. And then we started dumping, but he started to bring into doubt when they are going to actually be cutting rates. Not the fact they will, but when. So that's all I think that happened today. We do have a little bit of data tomorrow morning. If you're there live on stream, you should be able to get it, and we will go over all of that. So with that out the way now, what I need from you, a thumbs up on the video. Make sure you're subscribed, and if you don't know, we are live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open, youtube.com slash the stock market. And here's the thing about this video. We're talking about options. I'm going to show you how we made these plays but every single one of these plays we have covered it on the watch list if you are following along on this channel or if you have the time to watch us live we do all of these trades live and the thing about this I want you to learn this video so that you could watch the live stream better and get a better understanding and ultimately do it on your own to the fact where you could take what I'm giving you and adapt it into your own strategy so if you don't like what I'm going to go over you don't like the words or anything 
anything of that nature. You're going to leave me a hatred comment, whatever it may be. What I really encourage, man, show some love, see what I am showing you here, and try to find a way to adapt this to your own strategy. I like to keep things simple, and that's what I want to do here with this video so that you are able to fit this into how you trade. So on that note, run it, baby. Yeah. So right off the bat, what I'm going over today is what I like to call the ghetto standard deviation. The simple way to understand this is double the priced in move. Now, why do I use this term standard deviation? What is it? It is a mathematical term. This is pure statistics. This is how you determine the probability of something occurring. Now, I'm not trying to get into the nitty gritty. I have an older video. I think it's called How We Turned 160 into 1600 on Tesla. You could go take a look at that video if you really like it. Or if you studied a basic math class or statistics class, you should be familiar with distribution samples and standard deviation. So I am going to show you this, and it does does involve some math, but this is the number one thing you got to understand here. I am not trying to be technical. I am not trying to be exact with this number. I use this quick thing, and that's the whole idea. You can use it quickly to get a rough idea and a guidepost. So this isn't to say this is exactly the number. I know a lot of people like to get involved in the nitty gritty with all of it. And like I'm saying, if that's you, adapt this into your strategy, hone in on this, and you can make this all the more effective but for the simplicity of all of it it is just simple ghetto standard deviation and what we are looking for is a two standard deviation move so how do we go about this and what are we doing that's why i say double the priced in move the first step you're going to want to do and i'm going to show you this i'm going to explain it to you in words and then we'll go there i'll even show you a quick one on td ameritrade but the first step that you're going to be looking for is finding the priced in move on the option chain and how you do that you take the call and put price of the at the money options and then you add them up so if you do that that is literally one standard deviation the options the market makers when they are pricing the puts and calls if you could determine this number and it's very easy to do that is telling you that is a one standard deviation move. That's where the computers are pricing this sample size and what they expect to happen. So usually, this is a key thing you got to notice, you only want to be doing this on the week of there being event, mainly earnings. But once we have that number, what is step number two? You are literally going to double that number. So if you find in the price didn't move and it says $2, that's one standard deviation, you want to double that number, and boom, that is going to give us a rough idea of what a two standard deviation move would be on the stock. That is a slightly less probable outcome. That's why it's considered two standard deviation. So that's step number two. And then finally, step number three, once you have that number, you are going to shop for an option, get a little more time than you think you need for the event. It, you can do it on a weekly, but more time is going to give you way more flexibility, deal with all the bogusness in the market and make sure you walk away with a gain. And then ideally, you want to keep it below $100. So we'll talk about this a little bit more. But now let me show you how to quickly find this number and then we're going to go back to the text the beauty of td ameritrade if you go to an option chain you see this plus or minus two dollars and 36 cents that's that at the money option price so if you go to january 5th here and you go at the money you'll see what 79 cents and then a dollar 50 add that up it'll probably be two dollars in some change the stock's one dollar in the money so if you're using the 170 subtract that 133 from whatever you get there and that will give you a good idea of what you need to be doing but like i told you you want to use this for the week of the event so now jp morgan they report next week you're going to want to use 
use the January 12th because whatever's being priced in there, that is keeping in mind earnings. Believe me, the computer is already aware of it. So usually there's a number here that'll say in yellow, like market maker move. Let me see if I can find it on another stock. Yeah, you go to Meta on most of the time, or if you go the week of earnings on the company, you'll even see it done pretty simple. It'll say plus or minus 3.58, whatever the amount is. But even if that doesn't exist, you could just come over here to the option chain and it will show you $6.35. So now we're at the week of the event. But like I'm saying, even if you don't have TD Ameritrade, all you got to do is take the at the money price, take the ask on both of them. Yeah, there'll be a little bit of a spread. Like I'm saying, this is how I could do this in my head very, very quickly. Add the two, add the three, that's $5. Six plus 30, that's 90 cents. So it looks to be like 597 in my hand. This says 635. You could use whichever one you want, but boom, that's a general idea of where one standard deviation is. So once we have that number, what do we do? You times it by two. So if the number is 690 or 590, let's say six to keep it easy, double that up. That is going to be $12. So what strike price should you be looking for? Something $12 lower. So 170 minus 12, that's going to give you about 158. You could go in between here and these are the options for the downside. 170 plus 12, that'll get you to 182 and a half. This is giving you an idea of where to look. If a stock moves as expected, it will fall within one standard deviation. If it is an unexpected move, chances are you're going to have a two standard deviation move. And now some of these cheaper contracts, if they're cheap, will be able to go up. So like I'm saying though, look of the week of the event, but when it comes down to making the play, I like to just go one extra week to make sure that we have time to do some damage there. So now that you know it's priced in, we know our prices like 158 in between here and then 182 and then we could go start looking at the contract. So now Let's jump back to the document. Does this all make sense? We find the price in move. That's the plus or the minus that at the money price, you add it up. That is going to tell you what's happening. Make sure you're using the week of the event. Double that amount. You get the two standard deviations. And now you know where around those strike prices to shop for. And like I'm saying, you could use this how you please. So if you think something is more or less likely, you can always tweak this. This is to give you a rough guideline, not to put you in a jail or a prison or give you some little rule that you're like, oh, if I use this rule, everything's going to be okay. No, it's not. And like I'm saying, keep it below $100. That is usually the sweet spot. And especially if the stock is priced higher, we're going to go over that. But if you know the price is lower and it is accounting for a slightly unexpected move but not too crazy then you could pretty much make sure you're getting a good deal on your option trade so hopefully that makes sense now I do have a couple of tips and like I said I am going to go over an example for you and this is literally what I was saying here it is in result now to finding the actual price and now how do you know that it is cheap this is a question that I get asked a lot and honestly since uh, you people ask me this a lot I'm gonna ask you to do something right now like the video, make sure you're subscribed to this channel, check out the stream. Like I'm telling you, I've shared so many of these strategies over the years for free 99. You get to see it live, direct and raw. And I want you to learn it and I want you to participate in the stream. And above all else, man, you could show some support. Otherwise, somebody is just going to explain this to you in a much more confident manner. They're going to show you way crazier gains. They may not show you all of it and they are going to sell it to you. We do all of this for free baby so show some love but to give you a little bit more analysis now how do you find that cheap price this is something you got to watch out for I will show you with another example here that is recent and upcoming depending on when you're watching this video but it's very simple if the stock is lower priced it is going to be easier to overpay for the option why because I'm telling you if it's below a hundred dollars that's a good deal but think about it if the stock is only $20 and you're spending $100 on an option that is two standard deviations, that means one standard deviation is expected. You are expecting an outsized move and then you're spending $100 on a stock that you could have got 100 shares for, for $2,000. You're putting 5% down. That's a lot of money considering and it's very easy to fall for this trap. So like I'm saying, you might want to avoid the cheaper stocks or be very hesitant or make 
sure you are sure you want to make that play if you are using this as a guidepost. The best part about this, though, is that if the stock is higher priced and can move a lot and the option is cheaper, $100 and below, but it's like a $100 stock and it moves $10, $20 on earnings, this is more likely going to be the better play and that sub $100. And if it's within two standard deviations, that's how you're going to know it's good. Now, that being said, how can you backwards logic this and inverse all of this to understand what is good value or not? Guess what? You could go to any option chain. Like I'm saying, we found out our two standard deviations. JP Morgan, almost a $200 stock. Let's say we pulled out to two standard deviations and the options going for $200, $180. That is probably too much for that option. Why? Because you're spending a lot of money for something that is still outside the realm of what is being expected and priced in. That means you are overpaying. If you go to some of the high flyers, I'm sure if we go to Netflix, this could be a good example. They have earnings, I think, on January 19th or January 23rd. So this would actually be the week of it. Take a look here. Take $22.50 times it by two. That's going to leave you with about $45. The stock is at $470 now. So that'll be like, what, $515. Bucks. That'll be to the upside. So let's just see what that option looks like it took me a while to scroll this one's about $90 is that too bad not really but here's the thing I told people to do this I usually like to look at the options on a different chain and this is for the same week so this is the one that I don't like about it oh wait I'm, I'm tripping out here because wait a minute no that's why it's so cheap hold on this is a great example the earnings are on the 23rd. We can't use the January 19th. We have to use the January 26th. And notice right away that number doubles. And then now if that's what's priced in, you got to double that. 46 times 2, that's going to be about like $92. You even got like almost 50 cents there. Let's say $93 is your expected move on there. So take 470 Add $93 to that, and that's going to leave you with like what, 560, 563, or yeah, 663. No, 563. I'm tripping, but take a look now. We go down here, that's $210. That means you are still kind of paying a premium here. It's not like it was cheap like that January 19th. That mistake there kind of just showed you exactly what I'm talking about. And like I'm saying, you want to use the week of the event to make sure you're accounting for all of that time because look at that. If we even go five. 19, even if we go to 590 or 560, these are dirt cheap. These are going for nothing right now, but there's a good chance they probably won't hit there. That's what the algorithms and statistics are telling us. So hopefully you see what I'm talking about here. The higher price stocks, if you find them below that $100, or again, it's within two standard deviations, you may be getting your hands on a good deal. But if you notice two standard deviations is still at a premium, then you may have an issue. And then the other thing I want to show you, like I'm saying, another way to tell if the contracts are going for a higher or lower price, go to that option there. And the best thing you could always look at is how much has this contract moved? Like I'm showing you these 560s, that seems like a lot of money. Maybe I'm right on it, but they were going for even more. But you could see over the last couple of weeks here with this contract getting closer to expiration, having almost 50% less time remaining, you're paying the same price. It's not like you're getting this at a discount, even though Netflix has came down a little bit. So welcome to all all of the effery going on with options and all of that. But like I'm saying, this should be a guidepost to hopefully help you lose less money. So that being said, now, before we get into the examples, I hope this all makes sense. Now, the lower the price of the stock, the easier to overpay. If it's higher priced and can move and the option is cheaper, it will most likely be a better play. So I'll show you the example for the lower price, but we'll keep it moving here because I want you to understand this right now. Like I've said many times in this video, this is not to make predictions. This is to give you a good risk to reward on plays where you could go through and say, hey, there's earnings coming up. There's an event coming up. And if it is below this price, it could move a lot. If I'm right, I could get rewarded heavily like some of those plays I just showed you. And if I'm wrong, which you never know what could happen, and that happens a lot with options, you don't have to pay for it. The main goal I want you to understand it with all of this strategy is to not lose a lot if you're wrong. Wrong. A lot of people out there, like I'm saying, they're going to sell this to you in courses and they're going to give it to you in a different way. Say, look, you can make all this money, $600 into $7,000, all this stuff. But it's like, no, 
What I'm really trying to help you realize is that you will be wrong. There will be bad plays. You will even get the biggest scams, even the FedEx plays. A lot of stuff happens in this option world, and you need to set yourself up to put yourself in a position where, hey, if it works out, I can make a substantial amount of money, but if a lot of options expire, worthless, and if I am wrong, I don't want this to set me back too much, and this way you could get exposure without having to risk too much. So please keep that in mind. And then the final thing, we already brought this one up here a little bit, but this is one of the main things to give you. You'll notice all of those plays I did, except for the arc one, those were earnings. So you should be using this strategy for quote unquote event risk. When something is going to happen, maybe it could even be Powell or data. Then you could see the event risk priced in. Usually you look at the, at the money options, they will price in if something is expected to happen. And usually that is earnings, but here's the deal. You could still use this as a quick guide on normal days. It's just going to be less effective, but that way you could kind of hone in on, Hey, if something moves a little bit more than expected, that'll be two standard deviations. Remember three standard deviations, that's an extreme move, but you could get an idea of where things are and where they're priced. And like I'm saying, work this into your strategy. If you have ideas, hopefully, like I'm showing you, it's very quick and easy. You go at the money, you got TD Ameritrade, you can figure this out quick, double it up, get an idea, see where the option price is. You could just see a general rough outline of where things are. And keep in mind, though, things can move throughout the day. So now, that brings us to the first example. This was the play that I ended up doing today, and I was showing you JP Morgan. Well, I actually made that play here today. Why? Because they have earnings, and I did already exactly what I showed you. So remember, we said JP Morgan it was pricing in like what? four or five dollars. I'll just show you how I did it. I went to the week of the options. I saw what was being priced in. Where is it? I think the stock's at 170. My option chain's not loading. 260 plus 330. It's a dollar 40 in the money. So take a dollar off of that. But that's like five, six bucks. I was pricing in about five dollars. I think it was 10. But here's the irony. When I did this play, it was around $11 priced in. And a lot of these options already moved. But I got to the same prices I showed you. Instead of like 158, my number was like 160. And then it was like like 182, 182.50 to the upside. And those are the exact plays that I played. Why? It's a big mover. It's two standard deviations, but here's the deal. January 12th is the event. I went with the January 19th options and I grabbed the 160s this morning today at 55 cents. So like I'm saying, as the stock moved, there was a lot of movement throughout the day. We went a little bit early, but it ended up benefiting us because of some of the volatility. So it's already moving and that's what happens leading into the earnings. It changes. But this time around, I went both ways because I figured, hey, JP Morgan, take a look at the chart. It has moved a ton already. There could be a lot of downside and if they surprise they will be good. But think about it. 160, it was just there a couple of weeks ago. It's pricing in a little higher than that, but it's not like we're too high out of the money or far out the money. And like I was telling you, the price of this was borderline cheap. So I decided to go for this play. And like I'm telling you, you may see a lot of option volume. People see these videos and on. They want to go big on these. Like I'm telling you, if we have such a good cushion from a couple of these plays, we want to manage risk. I put in about like 160 bucks both ways. I grabbed two of these plays for 50 55 cents and they went up a little bit at close and then I grabbed the 182.50 calls. I grabbed two of these at 33 cents and ironically these actually went up in value and actually held up here. So I think I even have a gain on both of these but then I spent $60 here. So I spent like 160, 170 and I got to play this on both ways. So whatever happens, if something unexpected happens and it moves outside of one standard deviation, there's a good chance we will be in a position to either get our money back or hopefully get one of these big gains. So it's simply using the strategy that we've gone over. The other example, and now this one, they have earnings tomorrow morning, but I decided not to play it. It is Walgreens. So why? Because it's a cheaper stock. It has moved a lot, just like a lot of other stocks out there. But like I'm saying, we'll go to 2560. Where is it? So these contracts, 2550, these will be like 10 cents in the money. Take the price 108 to 113. That's going to be like what? 221, 222. And then minus the 10 cents that are already in the money. So it's going to be like $2.10. 
That is one standard deviation. What are we going to do? Double that up. But here's one thing. Just mathematically, you could see it. $2.10. The stock is $25. That is almost 10% priced in for one standard deviation. So if we took $2.10 and doubled that up, that would leave you with $4.20. Yeah, $4.20. That's a pretty big move, but now we kind of know where to aim. So $4.20 higher from $25.60 or $25.50. That would be like $29.70, $29.80. So you would be looking around here. And sure enough, these calls are pretty cheap. A couple of days ago, if you were paying 30 cents, this criteria maybe could have helped you. Even yesterday, that was a big amount that you were paying for two standard deviations. Let's go $4 out the money, go down to 21 or 20. These are going to be pricing you in now at like two cents. Now, here's the deal. These are a little bit cheaper and you could kind of see maybe, Josh, that's not that bad. But look at the caveat. This is the week of better than the week of would be the next week and then go do the same thing now what prices are we looking at 29.50 still 19 bucks but you can see it was kind of going for a lot there but like i'm telling you i just paid 20 bucks 30 dollars on a stock like jp morgan you get in the money on a 180 dollars stock you could get a lot of compounding really quickly as something that moves a lot smaller yeah it may move up but it's not going to have too extreme unless it really does go crazy same thing to the downside i mean your max gain is going to be limited on a put but like I'm saying, these smaller ones, sometimes they do look cheap. The prices are lower and you could always experiment. If you want to do this, you could buy two of these $16. You could even go get the 2950s, two of these for 40. You'll still spend 50, 60 bucks both ways and maybe you get a good hit. But in general, like I'm saying, you want to be careful of all of these and make sure if you really have an idea of what's going to happen, feed into what your thesis is. And then you could use this as a guide to get an idea of whether or not those options are cheap or not. And if you're kind of within the realm of possibility, but like I showed you in the beginning, this right now, two standard deviations is 20% because one standard deviation is pricing in 10%. So hopefully you see what I'm getting at here. But now, Chad, that is all that I have for you. Where my spy chart go? Well, it started to hide from me, but that is it. This is the tutorial. I really hope this helps you out. Anytime you ask me on stream, I'm going to send you to this video. But now when you tell, when you hear me say I made a play, two standard deviations, you could run this quick and get a great idea of what I am doing because this is very simple. And like I'm telling you, you could adapt this however you want. Even with like the FedEx plays and any of the Nike ones, when I get an idea there, sometimes I'll go closer to the money. If I feel like, okay, it's already cheap and then I could get even closer for even cheaper, I might as well go with those believe it or not so like I'm saying this has a lot of flexibility some people don't like that they may not like the name but if you really know how to use this I've seen so much success with this type of strategy and I knew a lot of you use this last year and it really helped keep you in the game so Chad I will see you in the morning make sure you drop that thumbs up but that is all I have for you or not. Nah. <laughs>